Hello everyone and happy Saturday night. Uh, our usual um, live for the Miss Painter, Miss Acrylic Paint a Lot page group uh, is Monday night but we've had a bit of a swap around and I'm going back to my old my old time which was uh, Saturday evening and I quite enjoy doing it on Saturday. It's, uh, it's a good day for me. So I hope it's a good day for you too. Um, tonight is going to be slightly different. I'm not just going to be straight up painting something. I will, I mean, come on, I'm doing a live. Of course I'm going to paint flowers. It'll be ridiculous. Um, but before we kind of get into the flowers that we're going to paint, what we're going to paint them on, the background, blah, blah. I thought it might be, now we've all gained a little bit of experience um, painting, we're, we're holding our brushes better, we're drawing things in, um, we're getting to know some of our colours. I thought it would be a good idea just to have a look at the colour wheel. Before I do, I just want you to see this picture. Um, it's not dry yet, I just did it this afternoon. And it shouts, it, I mean it is so loud. You know, if you walked into a gallery, I'm not saying this is gallery worthy by any stretch, but if you walked into a gallery and there was all lovely paintings all around and this was positioned somewhere, your eye would be drawn to this. And it's because of this colour scheme. It's a particular colour scheme called complementary. We'll have a look at the colour wheel in a minute and see where they are in relation to each other and if there are any other complementaries that we could perhaps uh, use to our advantage or not use if you're trying to make something a bit more serene. So let's have a look at the colour wheel. These are cheap and cheerful, they really are. I mean, I don't think it even costs two pounds, but it holds a wealth of information. You can actually get a bigger one as well. I think it's about eight pounds, nine pounds or something, um, which if you've got dodgy eyesight, um, I obviously have, then can you zoom in or are you? Um, yeah, zoom in a little bit, please, because um, you, you, you at home might have a chance of reading it, even if I can't. Um, fortunately, I think I'm kind of know what it's going to say. So around the edge are what's called our hues. They're not the same as when you buy a paint and it says card yellow hue. That's kind of a different thing. Um, in a... If you get that in a in a paint, I don't know if I've got one to hand that just says hue. Yeah, here, sap green hue. It's it's still sap green. It's definitely sap green, but they're generally using something more modern uh, than the original um, colour that was put in paints to give sap green. So it's sometimes it can suggest that the paint is not the top quality. Uh, this is golden, so I know it is absolutely top quality. And I know that what they've done is used a more modern uh, pigment. That's the hue with regards to paint. With regards to our colour wheel, these colours around here are our hues. They are the, the colour that you get out of your tube. And they're all around the outside as you would see them if you broke it there in a rainbow. So you've got red, violet all the way around to red. I don't know where a rainbow starts actually. Where does a rainbow start? What's the first colour of a rainbow? Red. Red. Oh, that's right. So yeah, you've got red then in that case all the way red, around. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue. Violet. Uh, indigo violet. Violet it is here, so I'm going for violet. Mm. Uh, red. And then we're back to orange again. So so basically it's your it's your rainbow, but um which is like that. And this has just been at the end closed. So we now got a circle. And um it tells you lots of things on this side. Um it tells you beneficially which colours lie to either side of any colour. Um, for example, well, any of them. Pick any three that you like here and you will have what's called analogous colours. You don't have to remember the word. It's not important that you remember the word. 
It's just important that you remember if you have three colours that are actually next to each other on the colour wheel, you will create a kind of um, more serene, calm, even if you choose red, red, orange and orange, it will be calmer than if you chose ones that are opposite each other on the, on the colour wheel. These are opposite, they cannot get any further away from each other. They hate each other. Um, they're both vying for your attention. And when you put them together, they, well, pop is the word people use. It can be quite brash, actually, like our um, red and green picture here, which I, I think is quite brash. However, it was done as an experiment. Before I did this, in real life, I was a scientist, and so I kind of so was Mr. Handyman actually, and so we liked doing experiments. <laughs> we experiment on all sorts of things. When I was doing my textiles degree, it was brilliant. We just we did loads of stuff that was not related to textiles, <laughs> but it was good fun to do. Um, that's not got anything to do with anything. Um, so this has an inner wheel here. And it works quite easily if you put that there. It says adding red, the, so you're adding red to blue, and you get this violet colour. Without moving it, if we go around to the blue violet and you add yellow, you get this nice green. Violet, and you add blue, you get a bit more bluey violet. And this is adding white to red violet. So you get this kind of mauvey sort of colour. And if you add black to red, you get a kind of burnt sienna type colour. That's quite useful if you're mixing colours, um, actually. Let's, let's just bring that adding black round to uh, green, yeah, round to yellow. So black added to yellow gives you this very, very pretty olive green. Um, golden paints have just brought a paint, an acrylic out called uh, green gold and it's kind of that sort of colour but there is no need to buy that colour. You can mix it very very easily with a yellow and a black but then something else comes into play with regards to these hues. You will notice that neither black nor white are included on our outer circle. And that's because, in the strictest sense, they aren't colours. Um, you, you, you don't need to know why, they're just they're different to the other things. Um, so, the black is very, very intense. So you need much less of it and much more of the yellow to get this sort of um, shade here that we have. You will find that out as you go along. If you add equal parts black to yellow, you'll just end up with a kind of black, sludgy black. You need many more parts of the yellow to the black to get to achieve this colour. Because this just tells you you're adding black. It doesn't tell you what proportion you're adding it in, of course. Um, and some of the other colours on, on the, on the colour wheel are also very intense. Um, and that's quite important to know in order to mix colours successfully. So it also has a grey scale here. We're not going to cover that tonight. That's a, um, that's a lesson for another time. It's just an introduction to the colour wheel, what it does, what, what information it holds for you and how you can use it. So turning it over, we once again have all the colours around uh, the hues, should I say, around the edge. And this time it has um, very helpfully got these cutouts there like this and you can move them around so that's your hue there or there and it will tell you this is your pure colour here at the top this is your shade this is your tone and this is your tint now these things are used interchangeably uh, in everyday life um, you know oh it's a shade of this oh it's a tint of that without actually understanding what they mean, particularly by hairdressers, can I say. <laughs> but, you know, um, that's well, fine. Other colourists are available. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure other people get to, get 
get mixed up with it as well. A tint is when you take your pure colour, your hue, and you add white to it. Anything then that you achieve is a tint of that original hue. A tone is when you add a grey to it, we'll come back to that. And a shade is when you've added black to it. So shade is darker, tint is lighter, and tone sits in the middle. Now these tones are pretty much the most interesting thing on here because in order to get a painting to feel right, you want to have your key colours. You don't want you don't want to throw every colour that you well you might want to throw every colour that you want into the um, painting, but it's not a good idea to find yourself a reduced palette of even seven or eight colours um, and use them to create your greys that you're going to use, create your shades and use the tints with them. So you'll, everything will sit well, it will harmonise. Uh, also on here we have, let's get yellow to the top. Generally with colour wheels, I don't know why, um, but yellow is always at the top, so we'll stick with that. Um, there, that's where I want that. So also on the colour wheel, you'll see on the back these shapes and arrows and stuff going on. They are important. They are the most important thing on the colour wheel, to be honest. Um, so yellow, and follow this arrow straight down here, and it takes you to violet. And it says along that arrow, complementary. Now, it might as well say opposite. Um, it, it doesn't matter. They're a complement of, of each other, um, but they're opposite each other. It, you know, it doesn't really matter. And when you put them together, like this one, they, um, they sing. That's all I can say. They just sing. So they're, they're good to have, but you also need something else there, really. Otherwise, it's harsh, like this one. It's got nothing else but red and green, and it's it's hard to look at. This one, however, has got the complement yellow and violet, and a little bit of orange actually, which I quite like, but it's it shouldn't really theoretically it shouldn't be there. But because of the addition of the green, it sits well. They harmonise with each other. The yellow shows the purple off, purple shows the yellow off, and it all looks tickety-boo. Tickety-boo. This one, um, I got a bit jazzy with myself actually, it's got some, can you see that reflecting there, big streak down there, look. Oh. Um, I put metallic paint in it because I had it. Um, and once again, we're on the yellows and, and purple complementary colours here um, but there's too much purple there's just too much all over there's not enough of this complement here to make it sing it's kind of dead it looks like I really need to go in and put some more contrast in there um, it's just uh, it's not the liveliest however so let's have a look and see what other complements we've got so let's go to green and see where the arrow lands. Well, we already know, don't we, because of this. It lands on red. So green and red are complements of each other. Let's go around to blue. Now then, the complement of blue is orange. So that's quite interesting. That was a surprise to me when I learned that many years ago. I don't know what colour I thought it would be, but I just didn't imagine it was orange. But if you think in your head of all those Mediterranean pictures that you've seen, the sky's blue, the sea's blue, and sometimes the roofs are those beautiful terracotta orange tiles, and they sing. But they're generally toned down by whites and greys of the building but it's a wonderful harmonious colour scheme. Mm. Oh, what are you saying? Um, you, 
Right, that's that. So we've now got complementary colours. We, we know what they are. The red and green, violet and yellow, blue and orange. And you really kind of need to know that so they're in your head and you can trot them out. You don't need to think about it, they're just there. The next thing that we can look at is what's called a split comp complementary. And follow your complementary down, but it's the colours on either side. So in this case, it's red, orange and yellow, orange. And they, they will give you a very nice and harmonious um, palette. They really will. And you can do that for any of the colours. For violet, the split complementaries are yellow orange and yellow green. So that says to me, straight away, iris. You know, when you look at irises, um, the big flag irises, they're, they're purple, they've got yellow bits in the middle, and these massive flag leaves. Um, so there you go. I mean, that's, you know, nature knows best, really does. And so you can go around um, the split complementary of red is yellow green and blue green. Interesting, isn't it? It really is. But I don't think we need, at, at this stage, I'm not going to really go into too much more detail. I think I've introduced you to it. I would encourage you to buy one and just, you know, when you're sitting down in the evening, just have a fiddle through it. And, oh, didn't know that. Um, because after split comp complementaries, you can go on to triads of colours. And after that, square tetrads and rectangular tetrads. We won't bother with that at the moment, if ever, actually. Um, so, yeah, you know, just keep whizzing that around. Oh, if I add yellow to green, to that shade of green, I get this nice lemony green. Um, if I add yellow to blue, I get a very vibrant green. Now, all of that is, it's straightforward, it's good information, but that is to say that if you are starting with this exact blue-green, and if you are adding that exact red, nine times out of ten we aren't, we're adding something in the ballpark. Um, which is why on you know rainy afternoons I would encourage you to get your paints out, whichever other ones you use the most, um, whichever are the highest quality ones, because some of the lower quality ones haven't got much pigment in and they won't give you a true shade. But draw yourself a line along the top and put all your colours. Draw a line down the side, put all your colours and mix them. And whatever mixture you get, draw it on your chart. And that will be very, very, very helpful to you when you come to mixing paints. It will save you a load of money mixing the wrong colours, which you see me do on many occasions. So I think, the, I think we're done with the colour wheel. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why people end up with muddy colours because they don't follow the colour wheel. Yeah, it is. And you end up with mud. Yeah, I mean mud is very easy to achieve, I can tell you. Um but some of the muds you achieve are not mud, they're grey. Um grey isn't just black and white mixed together. In fact it it's a it's a poor idea to just add black and white. Uh, lots of artists won't include black. The reason is that you can make black yourself. If you mix up the three primary colours, um, blue, red and yellow, in a certain ratio, which I think is four blue, two red and one yellow, you, get, you end up with black. So theoretically, you don't ever need to buy black. Um, I do buy, buy, buy black because I just know I wouldn't get that ratio right and it's darn convenient to have it in the tube, isn't it? But a lot of artists won't use it um, because it's, it has quite a deadening effect uh, on a painting. So if you think of anything you need to know colour wheel wise, uh, just pop it in the comments. I will endeavour to do my best and answer it, but I think we're about done with that. And I just wanted to go on now to show you how, how I've achieved some of these backgrounds um, for these. Because I know that a lot of the people who are in my group um, actually paint on furniture as well as canvases. And I think this is quite a good um, style. to act, It'll straddle both quite nicely. Um, I like it on these little boards 
which would frame up quite nicely, I think. Um, but you know, that could, you've, you've watched me do it. I've painted front the front doors of cabinets, I've painted all sorts of things with this uh, technique. So it does work um, on furniture. Just maybe seal the, the piece before you start putting acrylics on it, um, unless you know that it's uh, you know a good base. However, Miss Sandinan, could you take that somewhere, please, because it's still wet, and these trees were, were dry. Right, so let's move on to achieving some of those groovy backgrounds. So I painted up earlier today. I'm kind of organised tonight, aren't I? You've got to love it. This is me trying really hard. I painted up today um, a blue, well I did the green one as well, but a blue board and a purple board. They're not exactly uh, the best coverage in the world, but it doesn't have to be for what we're going to do to them. And let's just have a look on our colour wheel here at the complementaries again. I'm sure you're all shouting it at me now. The complementary of blue. Let's bring that round to blue there is orange and so I'm recommending that our flowers on that one would be orange with the foliage in a green. This one, purple, we definitely know what the complement of that one is, it's yellow. So I'd recommend that any blooms that you put on there would be yellow. So I'm just going to start however with the background. It might be all that we get time to do today. If it is, that's fine. We'll move on to the flowers next time. So all you need for this technique, uh, in case you're wondering what I'm using, I'm using um, MDF, which uh, we got from the hardware shop, b and I think it was. No, home, B&Q? Mm. B&Q. B&Q have a good policy that if you buy a massive sheet, which is about 8 foot by 4 foot, that you can have 25 cuts. Is that right? 15. 15 cuts. 15 cuts. So if you plan it out, if you draw, draw it out and then plan out 15 cuts, you can actually get, did we get 40 or something? Yeah, I just, 44 8 by 10s. Yeah. And, and it was 4 8 by 6s and 2 long. Yeah. 4 foot by 8 inches. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's a lot to go at, and I think they worked out at something like 30p each. So you could be, you, you know, you could use paper and acrylic pad. Problem with that is that unless you buy the really expensive ones, they wrinkle up on you. Um, whereas these, the cheap, um, if it works, frame it, hang it on the wall. If it doesn't, stick it on the back of the fire and uh, it'll keep you warm for a while. So let's, uh, let's select, the blue that I've selected for the black was phthalo blue green shade. And I'm just going to put some other blues onto it. I think I learned my lesson doing one of those purples that I showed you that I had too, had too much going on. So I'm just going to stick to blues. So I've got um, aquamarine, oh, ultramarine, I've got aquamarine on my head. Um, that's cerulean blue which is quite close to this one and primary blue. Now you can mix them, you know it's Mix them with white if you want to, if you want a tint. We can mix them with black if you want to, for a shade. Um, but nothing else. So let's let's put some let's put some um, ultramarine on first. See where that gets us to. I'm not using my open colours uh, for this because I don't need open colours. In fact, I want them to dry quite quickly. So. I'm just using my ordinary sommelier artist's colours, abstract. Those are the ones that I use. Um, that by sommelier are called abstract and innovative acrylic. They are 120 mils or four fluid ounces, and at the moment Jackson's got them on offer for about three pounds each, um, which is really good. I, I like them a lot. I find them quite highly pigmented. I have a nice structure. You can see that sitting on the palette there. It hasn't just... It's got some structure to it. So, we need a palette knife. Now, I, 
I think this this is a set of six, five or six. These are the ones that I've got um, to hand. You only need one, um, so don't you know? Don't feel as if you have to go out and buy a whole set of these because you don't. Um, I'm just going to use uh, this one. It's smaller. So just smoosh your colour out like that, flatten it down and just come back along so you've got a nice roll of colour on the on the palette knife like that and it, it's really up to you where you put these it, it really doesn't matter it's your you know your background and just let that catch where it wants to catch so as you get nice um it's not a dry brush effect, but it's a dry palette knife effect, I suppose it is. Just smoosh a little bit out then. Pick it up like that. Um, I don't really want to do a frame around the outside, so I'll come up a bit. I'm not so sure I like that bit there either, so we'll just... Drag that out a little bit. This is a very, very loose way of getting paint onto um, a canvas of some sort, onto a, you know, whatever medium you've decided to use. I mean, it may be that after we've put, well, say three of these on, we'll move on to a different colour. And maybe we'll feel afterwards that we want to come and put some of this over the top of of what we've done. So I'm just going to bring that along there. Come on. Lovely. So we'll move on to a different blue. Um, I might have to add some white to something at some stage because all my blues are very much of muchness. If you had something like um, Prussian blue, that would be lovely because it's a really dark blue. Or I could add some black and get a shade, I want to see. This is primary blue, they call it, so they must think that it correlates um, with, with blue on our colour wheel. Not so convinced myself, but... Um, Let's have a look what it looks like on the. Uh... I just want to. Add, I think I'm going to add some some black to it. Let's start by adding a small bit to it. See where you get to, because you don't want it to look black. But as I say, I quite like it to look like dark, like Prussian blue. Yeah, I think that's good. The, the paints that I've got in here aren't any different to the ones I've got in pouches. I just decanted some of the paint from the pouches into here um, because I have a habit when I'm squeezing them out of squeezing out far too much and then I can't get it back into the pouch. Whereas if I put black out or any of the colours I use really regularly, uh, I get some out with a palette knife, put it onto my palette and if there's any left I just pop it back in the, in the pot, put the lid on so it doesn't go hard and dry on you. Um, it's, it's worked for me anyway, it might be a tip to save you a few quid. That's a nice colour, very nice colour. So flatten it out, pick up a curve along the edge and let's go down this bottom edge here. Oh, that's a lovely colour. I've got enough of that palette knife. And it is nice when it starts to run out, it drifts off. This sort of section here is really nice. Um, I'm going to be doing this portrait, so I need to look at it that way and see um, see where I want these colours. I think I'll do one. I think I'll do one on the edge here. Let's pick up a little bit more. 
But as you can see, you can do this on the furniture. You could do it on a, a door, cupboard door, or the top of a piece of furniture, or whatever. whatever. Um, I would recommend you use acrylics. That's what, what I use, and I know that they're hard wearing. I know you don't kind of have to do anything to it really after you've done it. I mean, maybe you would feel um, some varnish over it would be okay, but it, it'll be fine, I'm sure, you know. So um, sooner or later, in the very near future, you're going to see me with a piece of furniture um, with this sort of background. That's a bit straight, so I'll come in with another colour uh, later and just... Is anybody watching us, Mr H? There's, there's uh, loads of people. Really? Uh, Georgia. Hello, Hello. Georgia. ONLP. <laughs> uh, Georgia. I'm just going to put one down here. Okay, so we're building it up now quite nicely, I think. Um, what else have we got? Uh, Susan's joined us. Susan Hall? Yeah. Hi Susan. Very impressed with your Tuscan mouse. Coming on great. There's two, there's two um, tutorials tonight with the Tuscan house. Because so many of you seem to be doing it and enjoying it and asking where we were up to that uh, Mr Handyman and I decided that we'd give you a treat, seeing as we'd already videoed it, haven't videoed anymore so um, you have to wait for the next, that we would give you part four and part five, yeah, um, which takes you uh, up to doing the front door and that's where we stop with that, so we'll pick that up when we're doing all the um, flowers and stuff around the front door. Brian joined us. Hi Brian, I don't think you've joined one of our mm. lives before, nice to have you here. Silvana. Oh hi yeah. Mary Bell, Claire Henry, Silvana Jones, Gail Hagen McLean, Nancy McLean. Blimey. And others that aren't oh, saying hello. The, well, Facebook doesn't want to. They've joined, I've said hello, but Facebook doesn't let you see so many comments, does it? No, it doesn't. They scroll off the top before I can <laughs> gather my senses. Because I've got more screens open than I know, it's like NASA. the BBC. It's like on. NASA. When you uh, look at blue and you look at the analogous colours of the blue, you see we've got blue-violet, which we've almost coloured with the um, ultramarine. That's quite a bluey-violet ultramarine. But we've also got blue green here, which we haven't touched. But you're getting to see sort of hints of it where we put that darker blue through. It's it's almost showing up in this blue green colour. So we're being very complimentary. We're being quite we're being quite clever here. Um, so I'm just going to mix up some of this blue with some white, and that will get us a tint of that colour. I think I'm going to have to add some more white to it because I'm pretty close to that colour of the background. How are you, Sylvana? I haven't seen you for so long. Hope you're doing all right. Right, so where do we need this? Down here, I think, crying out for something. Oh, that is close to that colour, isn't it? Too close. Oh, no. It's occasionally a good pop it up. Yeah, it's with, with difficult to see, isn't it? Yeah, really. Just occasionally, so we can get rid of the game. Yeah, so we're there. So I'm proposing to put a lighter blue here, possibly one along there, and then see where we where we get to. Nice to have you join us Brian. I'm not sure that you've joined us before for a for a live. Um, 
hope all, all is well with you. I haven't seen any of your paintings for a while. You uh, won the competition to have the cover photograph with the one of uh, Ginger Cook, Ginger Cook, Ginger Cook's tutorials. Um, I think it was um, it was flowers and ah, oh, that's better. It was it was very nice anyway, Brian. It's about time you put another one in the competition because the end of the month's coming up, so the new one will be chosen very soon. If you wonder what on earth I'm talking about, in this group, the first um, post that you come to is an announcement, and it's asking you to put your pictures in, as long as they're your work and they're all acrylic, put your pictures in there, and then I ask everybody uh, throughout the month to click like, love, wow, sad face, whatever they want to do, they all count the same, they all count for one vote, and whoever gets the most, then you will be the cover photograph of our group for the next month. And we're nearly at the end of the month. I think we're at the 30th of March today. 30 days of September, April, June, and November. 31 days in this month. So you've got tomorrow to get your, photo, your pictures in and get voting, please. Susan says she's going to have a Sunday binge. On, on the, the Tuscan House? On the Tuscan House. Yeah, why not? Why ever not? So this is um, coming along quite well. If you have got um, the things that shine, metallics, or um, interference, let's take that one to the end there. I'll show you what I mean by interference. Well, actually I won't. Sorry, I thought I had a tube of interference paint somewhere. It's paint that you get and it's called interference medium and you mix it through any colour that you've already got and it gives it like an oil slick look. So you don't have to buy your metallics in copper or gold or silver or whatever. You just buy your interference medium, um, mix it through whatever you want, and then that, that's metallic. So that's good. So do you think we need some more um, of this ultramarine up there? Or is that going to be a bit too much like a frame? No, I'm game for it. Okay, so I mean I want to leave some room in the middle for, for the flowers, um, but I have got a sort of frame there. Okay, what shall I do, what shall I do? I might just put another light one down there. And then I think that's, um, that's as much as we need to do for a frame. For the background, I mean. If you're putting something quite small on, and you know you know the dimensions of it, like you're putting a transfer on something, um, and you know the dimensions, yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that's all right. We happy? Everybody happy? Yeah. So the question is, should I start doing some flowers? It's going to be a very short live if I don't. Oh, yep. Oh, and I've managed to get blue on my purple one. And love a wet wipe, please. How did that get on there? Oh, man, I love it. You can cover it up. <laughs> so you see, it makes a huge difference. I mean, let's just ignore that blue bit of thing there. Um, just pop it down. Thank you. Um, you know, we haven't done anything really complicated here at all. Um, we've just taken some blues and palette knifed them onto a, to a board that we already had coloured. And we've got really, really pretty, pretty background there. I'm going to wipe my hands. 
because it's ridiculous. I could go on and show you how to do the purple one, but I think you've probably got the idea of that by now. Um, what's the complementary of purple? Yellow! What's the complementary of blue? Orange! Yay! We oh, yeah, all know the answer. I mean, that's... Um, Oh, I sold it. I did a, a painting of some wisteria um, and they had, yeah, it was wisteria going up a wall and underneath it there was a planter with some yellow flowers, yellow flowers in it. And they both just really fed off each other. It was, it was, it was harmonious. So it's worth knowing. It really is. I haven't just been dribbling on for the good of my health. Right, let's get organised on some flowers then, shall we? For this I do need the golden opens. This is going to be a bit of a whiz around, guys, because I don't want to hold you too long. It is Saturday night um, and an hour is about fair, I would say. So that's my uh, golden open sap green. So you've got a 20 minute flower challenge. 20 minute flower challenge, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to put some cad yellow out. Less yakking, more peeing. I know, I'm sure everybody's saying that behind my back anyway. Get on with it. And some white. These are all the golden open paints that stay um, wet very, very much longer than, <coughs> than the ordinary heavy bodied ones. Now, orange. Orange is the complementary, that's what we need. Having a look through my paints, I have no oranges whatsoever. So that's going to involve a bit of mixing. Here's a colour I've never used before, ever. It's called Mars Yellow. It looks like it's a kind of orange to me, so let's have a little look at that. Too far up. Too far up. Oh, now you haven't got the joy of seeing it. I'll bring it down, don't worry. There we are, brought it down. There we are. Thank you. Um, and another colour that's kind of in that thing is yellow ochre. What should be? What's the matter? So if we really want an orange, let's try Napthol Red. That's a very red red. Um, and I'm sure if we mix some yellow through that, we'll get a very nice orange. So, it's the 20 minute painting challenge, let's see what we can get done. I'm going to put a little bit of a background base on here, um, just with a bit of, um, I'm going to get some food retarder out like that. Those of you that haven't watched me before, it's kind of an essential part of the pro progr process. Uh, fluid retarder, it's Windsor and Newton Gallery, fluid retarder. And if you're using the open paints that take longer to dry, there is no point using the open paints if you're then going to rinse your brush out in water, etc. Because then they will take, they will dry as quickly as water dries. So you've spent all that money on open paints um, and they're just drying on you. I've obviously had purple in this brush um, the last time I was using it. Um, because I'm transferring it, but that's it doesn't matter at all. So let's put a bit of a, a green sort of background in here. Um, that's quite transparent. Let's put this up a little bit. I think you can see it better when it's yeah, when it's up. I'm just going to add a little bit of white to that um, green because it's it's really really transparent. So this is um, sap green, titanium white, and a bit of fluid retarder. So it's quite sloppy. So I'd like to, if possible, keep my dark sort of up here. 
and towards the centre. Leave that black in there that I had out. I'm just going to put a little bit of um, my golden oak and bone black just to make a darker shade of um, only needs a little bit of our sap green. I'm just going to take a bit of that, mix it in with a little bit of that, give myself a nice dark colour here for in the centre. And then a lighter one, this one further down. So make the edges slightly interesting, makes it easier for us when we when we're finished. Yeah, okay, I'm alright with that. So that's the end of uh, that brush. I'll just pop it in some fluid retarder um, for the reason I've just explained. Make some new tissue and get getting dirt, getting transference. Right, so I shall take a little um, quarter inch short flat, the De La Roni System 3, and I'm just going to kind of mark roughly where I think my 20 minute flowers are going. It's, we're now up to like 10 minutes of mine, so get cracking. I'm going to use this, um, what do I call it, Mars Yellow, and just roughly um, draw them in. So I'm going to have one up here. Well, that is orange. Look how that sings against that blue, would you? Um, I'm going to have one just sitting in here. I'm going to have one up here. Looking that way. I'm going to have one looking at us straight on, head on. Don't worry about the fact that this is this colour. It won't be for long. Um, and I'll put one there sideways. Just a little short petals coming in that way. Um, just drop a little one into here. And maybe into there. A little one. I'll put one here that's looking down. Maybe finish blooming for the year. Um, probably want to get out of this square at some stage. So I'll put one down here. If any of you get the time to watch a chap on YouTube called David Johnson, he's the god of flowers like this. Um, it's mesmerising watching him. I think I'll put one up here. Is it? It's all a bit square. That's there. That's giving us a much nicer. Um, composition. Composition. Thank you. Correct. So I'll just rinse that off. Now then, let's make ourselves a, a, ni a nice orange, a right proper orange. Oh, got this mixed up with Mars yellow now, but I don't think it'll matter. So I've got red and yellow. Mix it together. Obviously, the red is the dominant one there. A bit more and a bit more. Yeah, that's a nice orange. We're just going to take all that's left there. Okay. So I've mixed that quite well, but not entirely. There's still some streaks of red and some streaks of, of yellow. In fact, I'm going to put out just a little bit more yellow so I can have it slightly, slightly streakier. If I should desire it. So I'm going to load my brush with this lovely orange, just nibble into the to the yellow, and come down, and we're just going to put in some petals. Load your brush with the orange, nibble into the yellow, just 
slightly bigger. Like that. Do it the other way around if you want. Take the yellow nipple into the Well, I've got a lot of paint on here. I have to wait for some of this to tack up till my um, my 20 minutes is not going to happen, I don't think. Maybe on some of them, the ones that are a bit drier. It usually dries far too quick for me because we've got quite a lot of lights and lights equals heat. This is just a little one, just thinking about it. Oh. Okay, so you, you're getting the gist of what's happening here. <laughs> oh, I've got a blue thing. Um, the sort of most worrying thing is that I've got so much paint on here, so much pigment, as well as fluid retarder, um, that it's making it difficult to lay the next colour paint down. But we'll move on to, I'm going to take some of this um, white over here. And I'm just going to pick up some of this orange and then into the white. I will just give some details to these ones here. So on my brush I've got white and I've got orange. And we can make these really stand out. We probably don't want to do it on all of them because then they'd all look the same. Um, but, but some of them certainly. Um, there's always a question of where the light's coming from and you should try and think about it but this isn't kind of you know we're not Leonardo here what we want is it for it to look nice look interesting um, but maybe with a nod to where the light would be coming from let's try these it's not Oh, right if you carry on round, you're running out of paint, so you get a very different mark when the brush is full of paint and when it's not. So this one's coming round here, like that. This one's coming round here. And I think it's coming into the centre there. Like that. Yeah, it's the back of one, isn't it? Mm. Can you see that? I think it, it looks like the back of one to me, mm. but I'm not sure how well you've seen it. So you see that's the first stroke. We've got loads of white on. And then as we keep going, we're running out of white and we're seeing more of what the background colour was which is what makes it really interesting and why you should give good care to what you have made as your background colour. Right, okay, I think we've got a, got a lot of orange going on here. Um, I think I'm going to tone that down, they're just too, too orange for me, so I'm going to use some of this yellow uh, ochre and see what that does for us. Just drop it in. It's nice. That's what it does for us. It's nice. Okay, so I really like that um, 
yellow ochre and add a, a push at the shade of orange, isn't it? A push, okay. Right, so we need to um, to really put some centres in the ones that have got centres. Um, and then we'll put, we'll put the dark centre in. Ultimately, I think these will have a yellow centre, but I'm going to give them a, a, a nice dark centre. Um, I could use blue, which would then be in keeping with, with everything else. I could use a really dark blue, but I think I'm going to use dioxazine purple. This is a very highly pigmented paint. Please be careful that you don't drop it um, on yourself, your carpet, your kids, anything, because it just goes it's ridiculous. George says the white really brings the flowers to life. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It's, it's, like, it's like a magic trick. Mm. And you inspired her to start canvas work, which is going to hopefully get time tomorrow. <sighs> Excellent. We should look forward to seeing the results. Yeah, don't forget to post the results. I'm always after people to post results. And I do like to see them myself, actually. I mean, I love to see them. But it does inspire other people in the group when they know that somebody new who's never picked a paintbrush up before, or well, not very often, and they can produce this sort of thing, you know. I mean, you've watched me do this. Watch it through again, slowly or whatever. And you'll be able to do it. I mean, maybe you have to practice. I mean, I heard somebody the other day saying that I, I thought was very, very apt. You don't pop out of the womb able to play a piano. You just don't. But people are very accepting of the fact that you must have had to practice an awful lot. And, you know, that, oh, yeah, she practices every night and she does her scales and whatever. To be an artist, you have to practice. You didn't pop out knowing how to do it. Well, I guess some people probably do, but, you know, they don't. So you've got to practice, and there's nothing wrong with having to practice. Practice, practice, practice. I'm just going to drop a bit along the bottom of there, of these ones. Actually, they're drying up now, which is um, helpful to me on this occasion. Usually I'm cursing them when they're drying up. Right, so I'm just going to wipe my brush and I'm just going to drag this up the flower so we've got a little bit of colour coming up the flower. Gives it a bit of dimension. Make sure you don't carry your orange from one to the other, just wipe your brush. So you see it gives it some real... I mean these don't have a centre that we can see because they're on the side. They're just hanging down but it still will be darker in there so we'll just uh, make sure that we put that in right so these once again I hope you can see this but just take your brush just inside there and just each time that you move your paint wipe your brush So there you go, you can see that gives it a nice centre and we'll come back around with the whites and the highlights um, again. You shouldn't really be rushing when you're doing this, you know, allocate yourself some time, it's your time that the kids won't be needing everything, you know, attention. Louise says the mother day painting that she won is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much, Louise. That's really nice of you to say so. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't get it out on the Monday uh, to you. Oh, yeah, we usually do a giveaway in our live, don't we? Ah, well, we'll have to do a giveaway then. Do you want the dog or the cat? <laughs> get rid of the dog, please. <laughs> Um, we will put a centre in these afterwards of yellow, just in these three here. But I want to press on, because uh, I know I'm taking up a lot of your time, and I'm going to use this orange that we've already got mixed. I'm just going to dip it into... Did I have some? Did I have some? There, there it is. 
green, but it doesn't matter. Um, dip it into that orange, maybe a hint of that yellow. And let's just come into here. Oops, I've picked up something quite dark there. Bit of the orange, bit of the yellow. Now this doesn't want to go all the way around because the bottom part of it, probably the bottom part of it, will be darker. So we need to think about that. We don't want it to be that, um, to be lighter. So I'll just put some colour on for the moment. She really says she's already got eight dogs and so doesn't want to win another. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. What sort are they, Georgia? Eight dogs. You couldn't have eight like Bobby, could you? He'd drive you absolutely bonkers. I mean, he drives as bonkers as it is. He was the rescue. Um, we never had small dogs before. Um, and we love him because he's really got a, a, a character all of his own. He absolutely has. But it took a long time to get him settled here. He was such a nervous thing. Um, but then he fell in love with his dad, which helped enormously. Um, he didn't have much time for me. In fact, he bit me twice. Um, but now I think he's found his feet. He's doing all right. And uh, I'm just putting these this colour on, on, the, on the edge there so we can see that that is actually we're looking at it that way on. How, how long have I had? 24 minutes. That's how long I've had. Yeah, an hour and two in total. Okay, it won't be long guys. Mm -hmm. What should we give, do for the giveaway Mr H? Wow. One, of the, one of the ones we've done. Yeah, well let's, people can have a choice can't they? Yeah, we can bring all those three over can't we? I've got pure white on here and I've got quite a lot of it and I'm just going to just add a little bit of highlight to some of these where I think they would have caught it. Just maybe down the edge there. Yeah, she's got two huskies. A Springer. Oh my goodness. Shipu, Chihuahua, and three Shipu who who puppies. <laughs> That's like a handful, isn't it? That's more than a handful. That's a handful. That's a lot. I don't think I could cope with that. Could you? I don't think I could cope with it. Uh, not in this small house. <laughs> well, that's true. So I'm just I'm just imagining that the light's sort of here, coming down here, and it's going to catch certain parts of our flowers, certain parts of the petals, like like that. That sort of brings it more to life. So you just do it slightly a bit because you've got a little bit of glare. That's, that's better, thank you. So we're kind of coming to life here, guys. We're coming to life. So the other colour that we need to match the white is the very brightest bright 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 that we've got um, and that I think will be the natural red so although our flowers are orange and that's what we wanted them to be so as they'd uh, be the complementary colour there I haven't just painted orange flowers there you go that's it they've got white highlights on and they're going to have red low lights on which is unusual reds hardly ever a low light. So I'm just going to put it into some of these here just to give a bit of dimensionality. I don't know why I felt I had to say that in an American accent but I did. American viewers would probably disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> you ever get that when you're watching a teleprogram? They've got they've got some an American teleprogram and they've got this sort of um 
what what Americans obviously or American filmmakers or TV makers obviously think is, is like your standard Brit, and it's oh good morning, I'll have a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> Surely in the whole of America, there must be one English actor who could have done that. You'd think, wouldn't you? You'd think. Anyway, it amuses us. It's like we've come from um, where, where Vera, I don't know if you watch that on a Sunday night sometimes, is filmed. And uh, we find that quite funny because, uh, you know, the mileage they cover is just, you know, out into the country. It's only... You know half a mile and it, you know it's, it's not right okay well i think i think we're not looking too bad with those what do you think it, which way that way that. yeah yeah just um centers isn't it yeah centers and a bit of leaf a bit of leafage a bit of leafage i'm just going to put that in there because it's, it's looking a bit odd right so centers I'm going to try a brush that I have never tried before. It's. Um, so she says she's also got five children. Georgia, okay. stop! You're not by a telly. <laughs> by a telly! <laughs> <laughs> well, well done, you. <laughs> yeah, I'm. And, and Susan says her, her husband's a handful as well. Is he? Mm, apparently. Oh. Is it Georgia Owen? Uh, Susan Hole. Yes, Georgia, no, the, uh, the other one. Georgia P. <laughs> Georgia P. Yeah. Georgia P will call them. Say so Mr. P is a bit of a one man. No, Susan's husband. Oh, Susan's husband. Oh, sorry, Mr. P. You're Susan not says, a bit of a Well, one. my husband's a handful enough. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia's got five children, eight dogs, <laughs> and no mention of the husband. And Susan Hold says her husband is handful enough. Oh dear. I wonder if she has to take him for a walk. <laughs> her husband. <laughs> Perhaps, who knows? Right, so I'm putting the, I'm um, trying to remain sane here. I'm using a brush I've never ever ever used before. It was sent to me, um, oh for heaven's sake. It was sent to me um, to try out and let you good people know what I thought of it by the company Zen Art, who are a lovely little company. Um, people are really, really nice and very helpful. And this is part of their watercolour um, series, Turner's watercolour series. It's called Flat and it's a number four and it is so soft. It's softy, soft, soft. Um, and I thought it might do quite a good job of these centres of our flowers. I think it is. Georgia says, Mr. P is lovely, so is the cat, rabbit, horse, lamb and pigs. Oh my goodness. Does she live in a shoe? There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's old though. I just wasn't inferring that it was an old shoe. No, but <laughs> it could there, be a there wimpy was, new build shoe. No, it says that it's an old, there was an old woman who lived in the shoe. Uh, so if she's not old, it can't be her. Well, it's a relative term. Well, it is, I suppose. Um, that's all of the centres that we can see, I think. I just need to uh, whack the intensity up with this one a little bit. If you're having trouble getting it to be seen, um, Put some white in through it, makes it more opaque. Okay, so shall we ask people which um, which one they wanted to give away? Well, yes. Okay, I'm just going to put some suggestions of leaves on. I'm going to try this little um, Zen art brush, see if it if it's able to do what I want it to do. If not, I'll come back to my De La Roni. De La Roni. Uh, right, so this was our 
Oh yeah, this was our green mixed with a little bit of black, wasn't it? Just going to have to put a little bit of um, fluid retarder in that because it's tightened up in the time we've been thinking. Susan so, yeah. said she had two cats for 20 years. And Mr H is OCD, which does not grow well with animals. And it's fun for her. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> and, and George, you want us to know, do you see your paintings? No, I don't. Actually, the ones that I do, um, that are either commissions or they're going in a gallery, I do seal those. Well, I don't personally, Mr. H does. And I think he uses, oh, he's going to, yeah, um, he uses a spray varnish. Yeah, that one, you can see that's been varnished. Might get more of you, I'm afraid, but... Yeah, there you go. That's tilted play, you might see the no, you could, that's it. Yeah, you can see the varnish on it there. A varnish you can get matte satin and um gloss. That's a gloss one. Um whatever takes your fancy. Whatever you think you might want. I'm just putting some little um stems, little dots of greenery moving around, some leaves, etc. I don't want them all the same colour, um, and I'll just use this for a little while. Oh, you were going to show them what they could, what they could choose from between, weren't you? You were you were you? Yeah, okay. Well, I, I'm this side of the camera. Oh uh, yeah, I'm the hot side. I've got a very good face for radio, as they say. I hope you've noticed my face is different to how it normally appears, because I have makeup on. Because Mr H told me that I was shining in the camera. So, so I said, oh, okay, I'll put some makeup on. So when I went to get my, I've got like a hat box thing that's got makeup in. And when I went to get it, it was absolutely thick of dust, because I haven't worn makeup for easily 10 years. So I just delved around to see what was still sort of in a moist enough state to use. Moist. Um, let's put some green up into there. If you pass the, the things over, I'll, I'll let them. So there's this one, which is purple on purple we'll call that purple on purple and then there's this one which is purple on yellow there's this one which is red on uh, green obviously and then there's the one we're doing which I'll finish off quite nicely I promise which is orange on blue so if you enter the competition which I'll open the post for after this live um, and it'll just be something like saying me please or whatever um, then you get to choose but only you people that are watching the the live will know what your choice is so you people that are watching say me please or whatever it is and then say which one you want does that make sense does that make sense Mr P it Mr P Mr P I'm, I'm <laughs> I'm married Mr. Handyman to Georgia. Oh my goodness. Oh Lord. I know she doesn't know what she's in for. <laughs> no. <laughs> Neither do you with all those dogs. Well, at least I've got something to blame the mess on. I was putting some stalks and stuff in here. I'm just going to change my green a little bit. Um, Georgia says she loves red and green. Do you, Georgia? Really? I don't think anyone would choose that one. Purple on yellow is probably my favourite. It's your favourite, is it? Yeah. This one's my favourite. I like this one. Yeah. But, but it's got that sort of turquoise colour in that I just adore. Mm. So if you haven't mixed your greens up well, that's good. Um, but then you get more mottly sort of... I can't more. see it myself. No, no, no. It just occasionally helps to... Let's put some leaves and lines and 
bit of something and nothing going on. I think we're getting to be kind of there really. Don't you? I think so. When you're doing this, if possible, try and get a dark colour. This um, black and green here mixed together is a good colour to do that. And just try and just around underneath um, your main flowers. If you can get some dark colour in there, it really brings the uh, brings the flowers off the paper, the canvas a bit. Just picked up a bit of a colour I didn't want. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm calling that done, I think. Notice why you don't move, because you know full well <laughs> that I'm calling it done, and it and I'm going to fiddle with it. Oh, I've been like that before. Yes, exactly. Okay, that's done. In my mind, that is done. So it's done. So there you go, guys. I, I hope you can see what this <laughs> what this was supposed to be about, which was actually about the colour wheel. Um, but we've just brought the colour wheel to life a little bit um, by the complementary colours of purple and yellow, red and green, and uh, blue and orange. Um, I will put a post on as soon as I come off here, and as soon as I've got my cam my phone back in my hand. Um, asking you to comment and say which one, if you won, which one you would like to have. And I will do my best to get that out to you very early next week. I can't thank you enough for joining me. It's 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 really nice when you've got somebody there, you know, and you're not just talking to yourself. And this video will be on Facebook shortly after the yeah. end of the live, and it'll be on YouTube as well. Yeah. I'll upload it to YouTube. So. If you could possibly see your way to subscribing to my YouTube channel, I would be really, really grateful. It doesn't, they don't, they don't bug you, you don't get any um, emails or anything like that. It just helps the way my videos are seen. It, um, it's a bit like a Google search. Somebody was to put in, you know, I don't know, palette knife backgrounds. I've got more of a chance of being there than more subscribers that I've got. So it doesn't cost you anything. It, really doesn't pester you or bother you at all and it would help me so if, if you can subscribe to my youtube channel miss paint a lot i would be um grateful thank you very much right i think we're i think we're about done if you've got any questions at all about golden open about the color wheel about anything not life in general i'm pretty poor at that myself um but you know i think paint painting related just ask and share if you've feel like you possibly can share please share it i'd be grateful and anything animal related contact contact georgia, georgia. <laughs> 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 yeah okay thanks very much good night <laughs>